Okay, so hey everyone, I'm Olivia from Simplero, and today we're going to be talking about managing your lists and contacts. Um, so I mentioned before, but um, if anybody has anything specific that they came here to learn today, I want to make a note of it just to make sure that that's something that we cover today. But if not, then I can go ahead and get started. Um, before we dive right in, does anybody need a demonstration on how to upload contacts to a list? How to do a subscription list import? Nope. Okay. I'm going to touch on that just briefly and then we'll continue. Olivia, um, I, the, oh, the thing yes, that. Oh, yes, of course. The, a couple things about contact lists that I'd like help on is. Um, when you've got a contact, but they're in multiple things you're doing. So okay. whether or not we should have them in a list or we should tag them or what, you know, what's the most efficient way. So we're not, you know, creating too much duplication. Sure. Sure. Hopefully um, when we start getting into everything, um, you might get some ideas there um, and hopefully we'll have some time at the end to, uh, to answer some questions. All right, so just briefly, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to just go over a list import. So when you go to create a list, it's contacts lists. And if you're moving contacts over from another platform or if you have contacts that you have in a, a CSV file that you need to upload, you can create your list and that's uh, over here in the top right corner, create new list. Once you've created your list, here's what the back end looks like and you can click add subscribers in the top right corner. Once you do that, you'll choose that file and um, then you're going to, I'm actually just gonna grab that really quick. So in the file that I had, I have a first name and last name and email column. That's all gonna be pulled in here when you're uploading to, uh, uploading to your list. Now, uh, one thing to be very cautious of, say you have more columns than just first name, last name, email. Like you've asked other questions or there's other things or other tags from different platforms. If that's the case, what you want to do is go to settings, custom fields, and this is going to be before you do the list import. This is where you can add the other fields that you're going to bring over. So if I have birth date and phone number and time zone and, and other stuff that I have that I have in my spreadsheet that I want to be pulled into the contact record when I upload these contacts, I need to add them here first. And then when I come over and upload that list, those columns I'm going to match here with the system fields that I have with those contact fields so that everything comes in together. Okay. If you need help, you can always click this yes, please button right here. That sends us a support ticket. And uh, if you need assistance, we can help you. We can even upload for you. Okay. So that's how you're going to upload contacts to a list. Now, um, lists in general, lists are great for going to target people with emails or organize them by, you know, a specific freebie that they signed up for and all of those, those fun things. But there's always going to be a home list, the default list. So you want to have, well, you don't say it's best practice to have a home list. And then you can have other lists uh, depending on, you know, hey, maybe this is a, a freebie list that I'm a freebie that I'm running where if you sign up during this period of time, then you're going to have, you're going to be on this list. But you also want to have a list that has all of your contacts in it because then you can talk to, you can send a broadcast to everybody. So we can do that by adding triggers in the system say, when this happens, this happens. So underneath the list content tab, 
you can scroll down to the bottom. We'll talk a little bit more about these settings up here as well. But as you can see, I have added a trigger. Again, when this happens in the system, then this happens in the system. That's a trigger. I can add a trigger that says, okay, someone subscribes to my freebie list. But I also want them to be subscribed to my main list, my home list. So I can click subscribe to a list. I can grab my main list, which in this case is Simplero's workshops newsletter. And changes. So since we already have that, I'm going to delete it just to uh, release any confusion. But this is how you can organize um, everyone coming on to different lists, but still being on one main list that you can send broadcasts to. Okay, let's talk a little bit about list hygiene. As you can see here, these are all of the lists. I've got 16 lists on this workshops account. I have seen members have hundreds of lists. I have seen members have, you know, a handful of lists, maybe just a few. Depends on how long your business has been running, how many lists you want to have for certain things. You can create a list for people who subscribe or who purchase a product. Um, so all different ways, it's kind of up to you and how lists best work for your business. But say you've been running a business for 10 years, you've got hundreds of lists and some of them aren't relevant anymore, but you don't necessarily want to get rid of them. You don't want to delete a list. Here, you can see that all of these lists are starred. This means that when you come to all of your lists, all of these lists are going to appear. Everything that is starred. But if you unstar by clicking on this star icon, it essentially means that you're archiving the list. So if I unstar that list, now it no longer shows up in my main feed of lists. And if I go to unstarred, all of my unstarred lists. So you have a list of archived lists that you can uh, that you can go back to at any time without deleting. The other thing to be aware of here is that you can delete a list at any time. A contact and a list are independent from one another. What this means is that if you delete a list, you are not deleting that contact. That contact will always be found contacts, contacts, and this is all contacts right here. So if you're looking for all of your contacts, regardless of what list you can see here, you know, in this view, what products they have purchased, what list they're on, or if they're not on a list, uh, any tags that they have, all of that stuff. So again, deleting a list does not mean you are deleting the contacts in that list. That contact still exists independently. Um, so if you want to delete a list, you have to come into that list and you're going to click on the three dots button here in the top right corner and click delete. You can also duplicate a list if you like, um, and that's gonna be found here as well. And I'm looking over here, I've got a lot of notes. I get excited with these workshops. So I just wanna make sure that I, get everything. Um, okay. I'm starting, that's great. Okay, so how do you get people signed up to your list? Olivia, can I ask a quick question? Sure, Beth, go ahead. Um, if you do delete someone, or you, I'm sorry, if you do delete the list, you said that it doesn't delete the contact. Is that only because we've had them in the main and in the sub list? No, uh, and that's a great question, Beth. Thanks for asking that. No, um, if a contact has been added to Simplero, say they sign up for one list, that's it. And you delete that list, that contact still uh, is still a contact in your system. That contact is not deleted. They're just no longer subscribed to a list anymore if they were just subscribed to one. Thanks, Beth. Okay, so you want to have people sign up for your list, right? So we can use sign up forms for this. If you click on the sign up forms tab, 
you'll see a link up here that says create a sign up form. We have two options for a sign up form. You can use a full page sign up form, which is essentially a full page landing page. Uh, it has its own URL. So you're essentially adding a sign up form to a site page, but it's a standalone site page. Whereas an embedded form is something that comes with code. And you can put that form either on your external website if you're not using Simplero for your main marketing site, or you can put it on any of your Simplero sites as well. So an embedded form would be like an example would be like a, a button clicked on a on a site, maybe on the home page of your main website, and a pop up appears with a sign up form. So there's more. Um, these just don't have their own URLs. They have to be put onto another site page. Okay. So you can create your sign up forms for your lists. Let's go back to lists here. Uh, something we can also talk about here is labels. So labels can be found everywhere in Simplero, not just for lists. You can label membership sites, products, lists, um, all sorts of stuff, events. And it's a way to keep things organized. So. If I want to, if I have, uh, say, lists that are related to one product, maybe I am running different core, uh, cohorts, sorry, of a course, and I'm selling the product and creating a list for each group of, of people that, that join the next cohort. So I want to keep these lists organized. So I want to create a label, and that's this little icon right here for these lists. I can create my label or I can choose another label. This will make sense in a second. Um, so course list. If it doesn't uh, appear, then you'll say create label. You can pick a color for it. I'm gonna create that label. And now I can add the labels. So now those show here. So if I'm ever in a big list, uh, the big view of my list, can filter by a label. I can also say this course label, courses list or, or whatever is gonna also go to my product. We won't like talk too much about products, but I can add a label to the product the same way. So essentially this is just a, a, a way to organize things as well. You can put labels on media files if you're using media files uh, for a certain course and I wanna make sure that I can filter by all of those images. I can add labels to those as well. And then the last thing with labels is that say, uh, and you can you know, filter by a label here in list. So if I filter by course list, which is the one I just created, you can see that there's this custom view tab that's appeared up here. Say I want to be able to click at any point to view that all the lists that have that label. Then what I'm gonna do Click these three dots right here and click save view. And then I can name it and save it. And now it's here all the time. So if I refresh, if I go back to contacts lists, now any list with this label, I can click over here and it's right there already. So just another way to keep things organized. You know, you always have to do what's best for you and your business. That doesn't always mean using labels, but obviously we like to let you know uh, all the options that you have to, to organize everything. Okay, so I wanna talk about all the settings within a list now. Um, any questions about what we've gone over so far before I dive into list settings? All right, let's... I'm in here and we'll talk about the list setting. Okay. So first, underneath the configure tab, the first thing you'll see here is double opt-in, which is list confirmation. List confirmation is something that we rec highly recommend. It helps prevent from spam, but it is not required. What this does is when someone signs up to your list using your opt-in form, they will get an email that says, do you really wanna be subscribed? And you can edit it a little bit here as well. 
um, you, you can customize that email. But basically, there's going to be a button in that email that when clicked, then they're subscribed to the list. So again, this just helps prevent from spam. Some people really love this feature. Some people don't like the added step. It's really up to you. Um, so again, that's going to be under the list configure tab. And you can enable double opt-in. This means that a default email will go out. If you toggle on the customize the confirmation email, you can add your own text. And then this is default text at the end that says com confirm this right here, but then you can change the text of the button. Yes, I wanna be subscribed. And that's that, okay? Um, the advanced settings here, override default sender email. What does that mean? Well, in your account settings, so if I go to settings, a general account settings right here, you're going to add. So this is your default across all of Simplero unless you override it somewhere. So a lot of these basic settings here can be overridden on the list level or the product level. It just depends. Or you can use the same email for everything. That's totally fine too. I see that all the time. So if I go back to this list here, I want to say I want to override the default sender email. I can add that here. Additionally, if I want to add a prefix to uh, to my broadcasts that are sent to this specific list, I can do that too. You know, so this is workshops. So then workshops will appear before the subject of each email that is sent to this list. I don't see the prefix option um, used too much. What I do see is the footer text. So you can add your own footer image, footer text, add a link in there, and any broadcast that you send to this specific list is going to have that footer. So there's no default footer like for all of, uh, of the system, but you can add the footers to your list or to a product so that if you send a broadcast to any purchases of a product, any subscribers of a list, then um, it'll be here for that product or list. So that's where you can add. If you want, um, you want some additional anti-bot settings here. Say to never use a CAPTCHA, like, uh, you know, confirm you're human. Um, you can use it on all signups or on suspicious signups, and that's up to you. GDPR, mostly just found on the account level. GDPR is the agreement that a subscriber makes that they are saying, yes, I want to receive emails from you. And that's going to be under the privacy settings, but you can override it for the list, although I don't see that very often. All right. Come back to list here. We've talked about the settings, talked about signup forms. Now we're going to talk about content a little bit. So similarly to a product, this can also give access to content. So let me grab a product here just so you can see. Under a product content tab, this is where you choose this. Somebody purchases this product. And here's what they get access to. So this is where you're telling the system, okay, they've purchased this product. This is what they're getting access to. And then similarly, you can do that for a list. The difference here is that a list would be free, free access, because you don't pay to subscribe to a list, whereas a product is normally paid access. So a lot of the time I'll see do uh, members do a free mini course? That's their opt-in. That's their freebie. I want to give access to this, you know, two lesson course or five lesson course, really small course. If you subscribe to my list, here's what you get. And in this case, you can do the exact same thing that I showed on the product, which is to click on the site and click on the course. Okay. Somebody subscribes to this list. They're going to get access to anything that I've checked here. 
Um, also, if it's a freebie content such as a PDF or an audio file or a video that you want to give people to download, you can add that here under freebie content of your list. And now that we can scroll down a bit, um, this again, we talked in the beginning is where you can add triggers. Um, customize thank you page. So if someone subscribes to a list, they're going to get to a Simplero default page that just says, thank you for subscribing. If you don't, if you want to customize that page a bit, you can add your title and your text here. And that will be what people see on that page instead. It's still going to be using a default uh, template though. So the alternative is to create a full page landing page, or it doesn't have to be, basically you can create a, a page, full page landing page, or you can take them to a site page. This is exactly what happens when someone subscribes. So the moment someone subscribes to the list, whatever you put here is going to be where they go, whatever URL. So you, uh, I would say that this is a great way to customize the experience for new subscribers right off the bat. Um, and so that, yeah, just keep that in mind here. Also, um, custom page for confirmation required. You can customize that page as well. So it's not a default, like, hey, check your, it's going to say, hey, check your email um, for, for this email that says, hey, I want to be subscribed. So that's the one that has the button. So you can customize that page as well by adding a URL. I don't see this option used very often, but if you do want to add a custom URL when someone unsubscribes, you can do that here as well. And then, let's see here. If I uncheck, so say this uh, list is not giving access to any content, then there was an option here that has disappeared. If I'm giving access to locked content, this option appears. Don't email a contact about how to access. So basically, the system is going to automatically send this email that says, uh, here's your login information, because now they've done something, they've subscribed to a list that's given them access to content where they're gonna need login information. This is the system default email that goes out when someone gets access. If you don't want to use this option, there's an alternative. So don't email the contact about how to get access, but you obviously want to, right? You just maybe don't wanna use that default. This, this brings us over to auto responses. So auto responses can be used on a list or a product, and they are automated emails that go out after certain periods of time. Now, this doesn't mean that you have if you decide to leave the default email that you shouldn't send autoresponders. At the very least, a thank you for subscribing. Here's what to here's what to expect, and then you can say zero days after sign up, which is the immediate email, and then I can say all right, two days after sign up. I want to send this email and so on and so forth. So if you are just starting out, uh, a great rule of thumb is to create all of your auto responses already. If someone starts subscribing after you're adding them, they might get missed. You can always resend them, but try your best to get all the emails in a row lined up before you have people start subscribing to your list. It'll save you a lot of time and it'll give you peace of mind knowing that all those emails are going out properly to each person that subscribes. So in an email, we have these fun insert options. So I wanna send, you know, hey, welcome. Thank you for subscribing. You now have access to this free mini course. Now you need login information. So username, password. These insert options have the code to give them that information. So if I click insert, and if you're using the, um, oh, sorry, I got distracted. Um, insert uh, Simplero ID, that should go here. And then same thing goes for the generated password. So now when this email sends, it's automatically going to include that information. You can do this in a product, you can do this in a list, you can do this in an email broadcast. Um, 
And that, that's how uh, the alternative to getting that information without using a default page. Any questions here? Nope. Okay. Let's talk about tags a bit. So tags are personal identifiers that can be added to contacts. So here are all of my tags. Tags are only seen by you. They're just another way that you can organize things in the system. Your members, your contacts will not see tags. So someone subscribes to, let's say my list. Maybe I wanna add a tag that they subscribe to that list. So I'll create a tag here, create a new tag under contacts tags. And I can then, where am I here? Add a trigger, same way we did for the subscribe to the home list to add a tag. You can see here that triggers on lists can do a lot of things. They can start automations um, and you know add tags, all sorts of stuff. So where tags can come in handy, oops, is, is a lot of ways. For example, if I go to contacts, all contacts, I can filter by a tag. So if I want to say, I want everyone who purchased this product and also has this tag to show up in this list here, I can do that. So Joe's cool tag, and I can add multiple filters here. So again, it's just another way to organize, not something you have to use, but can be very helpful in a lot of ways. And um, all right, couple more things here and then I can open up the floor to question. Let's take a look at a contact record. So if I go to contacts, all contacts, or if I go from a list, it doesn't matter. I can take a look at a contact record. If I click on this name, now I'm seeing this, this contact record. Um, maybe, there we go. So under a contact record, I'm gonna see contact info. So this is all of those fields that we talked about. And actually I wanna touch briefly on that again. So when we talk about uploading, a, uh, uploading contacts, I said, you need to add those custom fields under setting fields in order to align each uh, like name, email, maybe birthday, all that stuff when you import the contact. All that information is gonna show under contact info. Those fields, settings, custom fields can also be added to your contact, to your signup forms, to your product order forms, so if you want to gather more information when someone subscribes to a list or purchases a product, you can use any of these custom fields that you've created. So let me just show you really quickly what that looks like. For an embedded signup form, when you're creating that form, if you scroll down on the right-hand side, you can click add field and all of those fields that you have are gonna show up right here. So if you're for some reason wanting to ask, how old is your oldest child? I can add that to my sign up form. So as many fields as you want, there's no limit. So I can do that for a sign up form uh, and embedded. I can do that for a full page. So if I come to a full page sign up form which again is essentially a, a site page, a standalone site page that um, has a signup form section on it. So if you ever find yourself looking to add a signup form section, we have another workshop we're gonna be doing about the page builders. So I'm not gonna go too far into this, but if you're looking to add additional uh, fields to a signup form section, you'll do that within the editor right here on the left. You'll scroll down and all of your field options are going to show right here. 
So that's how you're going to add them to, to the, the full page signup form in the signup form section. Okay. So again, when somebody signs up, um, you can get those fields and you can also um, add them to an order form. All that information Olivia, is going, oh yeah. May I ask a question? Sure, George, go when, ahead. So you can have organization on there, but when somebody uses their credit card mm -hmm. and they fill out the form, it uses company. And it doesn't, what? they're not associated with that contact. It's only on with the credit card payment. Have you noticed I, I'm not following, George. So on a product, are you talking about um, a product order form when you're using custom fields? Right. So I've used organization, but then when people have paid, there's another field that's part of the payment process called company. And it doesn't show up on their contact. Oh, that's interesting. Would you mind sending a support ticket in on that? I'd like to make sure that our team can can take a look and make sure there's nothing going on there that shouldn't be. Okay, thanks. Thanks, George. Um, all right. So from um, from the contact record, you can see a lot of things. Um, we see purchases. So any purchases that this uh, contact has made are going to show right here. Any deals they're in. You can also create notes for each customer. This is really helpful for a lot of our members. So if I want to add a note, I can click a uh, note here. I can choose, is it a call, a meeting, a session? And I can add, you know, Thursday meeting. And then I can add the notes here. And sorry if you hear some squealing, there's a thunderstorm and my dog gets very anxious. Um, then you can add the notes about that time, create the note, and here it is. Again, there's no limit to the amount of notes you can add, and this is a great way to keep notes, You know, especially if you're doing group uh, sessions or anything like that. You add notes about the member, and they're right here. You can also see any list that they're subscribed to, any credits that they've been given, uh, membership sites they have access to. This is a big one. So either directly, which is through a trigger or automation or through the purchase of a product, you can see how they got access to that specific membership site. Scrolling down, you can also see um, any automations that they're currently in or have completed. So any automations they've been in past or current, any support tickets that they have uh, submitted, so same to the way that you all uh, submit support tickets, we give you that same feature. Not something I'm gonna go into uh, a lot today, but contacts support tickets. And you can use our support tickets feature. You can set that up under settings, support tickets. You can create an email and have um, all emails sent to that email to be forwarded to create tickets in the system. And you can also put a help widget, again, the same that we use, this corner right here, the little question mark. You can have that on your websites or membership sites and allow people to submit tickets the same way you do. And if they have submitted any tickets, you can see that right here. Any worksheet responses that they have, survey responses. Surveys are something we just uh, rolled out the other day. Um, any invoices payment methods on file, any affiliates connected, any scheduled events they have, any emails that they've been sent. So here, if you're like, I don't know if this person received this email or not, you can come to their, their contact record and you can see it here. Lastly, in a contact record, here's that you can track activities for each contact. So this auto response was sent, they made a purchase of this product, um, and they opened this email on this day. So lots of really powerful tools here within the contact record. On the side here, you're going to see the Simplero ID. Now, if, so in my case, my password is not the generated password when I first joined Simplero. It's gonna be different. So if I have changed my password from the system generated password, what that means is that the system no longer has that password. 
if you come to a contact record and you see the password, it's because somebody who joined got login information, never actually changed their password. That means we still have it. If you need to resend the Simplero ID to someone, or if you need to send a password reset link to someone, that all can be done from the contact record right here. Also, below that, you're going to see any tags that they've been given and any segments they are a part of. Um, segments, we can talk about briefly, just um, a way to bring multiple together. Well, that's a bad explanation. Uh, say you want everyone from a list and everyone who purchased this certain product to be in one segment so that I can send a broadcast to all of those people. So if I create a segment, and that's the top right button there, I can include list subscribers of this list. And then I can add another include group. Okay, I also in this segment, I want event participants of this event as well. So lots of ways to keep things organized and this will automatically uh, upload or uh, keep refreshing, I mean. So you'll always have the exact amount of members in that segment. And then you'll see up here, you can send a broadcast right from the segment or um, perform an action such as send an email, send a text message, add a tag to everyone in that segment. You can also, if you click here to view contact, this is going to be a list view of that segment. All right. Um, that is all I have in my notes to go over today. So with that, I'd like to open the floor to, uh, to questions. Anyone have any questions I can answer? Yes, uh, um, I have uh, a question um, related to segments. I have uh, um, a program that participants sign up for each quarter. And uh, those who sign up in each quarter, I make a segment out of them. Okay. But I, I need to, so, so even though they are in a segment, they don't get access to what I have defined in the segment without pushing the bottom, uh, the, the next to send broadcast, you, you know, the one, I don't remember the name of the- uh, The, 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 uh, the action? Yeah. So perform I have to, action? Yeah, so you have to push the perform action. Otherwise yeah. it doesn't include, uh, for instance, new participants in that segment. You're saying that when, that you're saying that your segments aren't automatically uh, uploading or, or refreshing the amount of people in the segment? Uh, no, for, no. If I put a new person in, I tried it today because I've had the challenge with it. So I tried to, I, I added a new person into the segment and the segment was already defined in the, in the right way. But I have to push that uh, recalc button before the last person was, also was included in that segment. So... So uh, it's just, it, it was not, um, I didn't, it, it didn't, it didn't, it doesn't tell us intuitive that we should p press that button, but uh, at least that's what was I experienced. Okay. Um, yeah, if you would like to see some changes with that, uh, do you have a link to our feature request forum? Obviously we, uh, we want to make improvements, you know, for all of our members so that our platform functions the way that, you know, works in everybody's best interest. So your feedback is super, super important. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to grab a, uh, a link here and throw it in the chat to our feature request uh, board. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for everybody here, please, at any time, if you have suggestions for us, post on our feature request board. Calvin and our developers keep a really close eye on this. And you can also back other people's ideas and add comments to other people's ideas. Um, so it's a great community there as well. The more, uh, the more traction you get on your idea, 
the more likely it is to be implemented. So if you want, you can post in the Facebook group with a link to your suggestion. Hey, I just posted this in the feature request forum. Um, if you like the idea, please go and, and like it on there so that, you know, hopefully it's something that, that we, the, that this employer team can work on. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions? No questions at all? This was really good. I picked up, I've been doing some plural for a few years and you showed me like three things that I was unaware of that'll make things oh. a lot I'm really happy to hear that, George. That's, you know, why we're running these workshops and also why I enjoy uh, running these workshops so much. Um, there's so many hidden gems within Simplero, so many different options for for you and, and how to customize your platform for, for your business. So just to, you know, get the awareness out, out there that there are many options on, you know, in this specific instance, you know, how to organize your contacts and, and, uh, and lists and all of that. So thank you so much for coming. All right. Um, do we, if we don't have any other questions, I'm okay to end this early, but just double checking. Um, any questions I can answer about today's workshop? All right. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, we're going to be doing these workshops every Thursday for the next 10 weeks. And uh, I hope. Hope that you uh, join in and I see some familiar faces in the next coming weeks. Thank you all. Have a good evening or morning or wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you.